Hey guys, Ryan House here, and welcome back to my show. And today, uh, we're going to give a new game a shot. This game is called Field of Glory. It's published by Slytherin Software way back in 2009. And it's inspired by the Field of Glory Wargaming Rules for Ancient and Medieval Tabletop Wargaming. And that was written by Richard Bodley Scott, Simon Hall, and Terry Shaw. Uh, some pretty famous uh, tabletop wargaming creators. Okay. So, they basically took those rules, moved them over to the PC, put it into a game. And that's what we're going to give it, uh, we're going to go ahead and play right now. Now, uh, just to give you guys the flavor of uh, what this game is, looks like and how it plays, we're going to be playing uh, Clastium. This is in uh, 222 BC. Uh, basically, here's the scenario description. Uh, the Roman allied town of Clastidium was under siege by the Gallic king Bertumartus and his army, and the Roman general Marcellus set off boldly with a force of just under 4,000 Roman cavalry and Velite to relieve the siege. So let's go ahead and start the game. Now, this is the game. Every time you play one of these scenarios, you'll have your set armies. Here's Marcellus down here, and here's Bertumartus' army up here. Um, you have your warriors. Let's go over the troops real quick. I'll I'll explain what these are. These are Highland Warriors. If you look down in the bottom left, you'll see Highland Warriors Gaul. Uh, their experience is average. I believe it, go I believe it goes uh, poor, average, superior, elite. They are undrilled, which has to do with how they move in combat. Undrilled Warriors uh, have to use their full movement in order to fully change their facing. Now they can change their facing while moving, but say there's an enemy right behind them, in order for those warriors to all turn around, it's going to completely use up their movement, right? Okay. Now, also, for the type, they say they're a protective medium foot. Protected means that they have some kind of protection. Uh, it's not heavy armor, they're not armored, but they're protected, so they have a shield, maybe some light leather armor, stuff like that, right? Uh, a little bit of metal, but not too much. And then their medium foot. So medium foot, how they engage in combat is usually through impact damage. So they like to uh, charge up uh, face to face. Now they're not going to hold uh, as well against obviously Roman armored uh, soldiers, but uh, they are really good on the flanking forces uh, as a flanking force, and they're also good on mountainous terrain against heavily armored troops because they're more mobile uh, for that respect. Now their cohesion is steady. What steady means is uh, they're at their full cohesion. They're working 100% as the unit. Now, as they take losses in combat, uh, that status, that cohesion status, will drop from steady to disrupted to fragmented to an all-out rout. And when they rout, they run away, right? And it also has to do with their combat effectiveness. And then it'll also give you a description of their weapons. These are impact foot. So that's going to give you an idea how they attack. Gallic warriors like to charge at the enemy literally throw their bodies at the enemy uh, along with their weapons you know jumping onto the enemy as a as a mass group and the strength is the number of troops that they have you see strength down there says 1000 so that they're 100 uh, percent capacity for their troops so with that being said um, other types of impact troops would be uh, the roman soldiers uh, the roman legions uh, they are also impact troops uh, however, they throw their, their pylum, and that's their form of impact, right? Okay, now let's look at some of their other troops. They have Highland Warriors here, more Highland Warriors. They're all swordsmen. In the back here, we have Lowland Warriors. Um, they are the heavy foot. Okay, so there are 1,500 men here in this Lowland Warriors group. So that's a dangerous unit. we got to be careful. We'll try to avoid that unit. Uh, here is King uh, Bertomartus, the Gaul. You can see his experience is superior, uh, yet his cavalrymen are also undrilled. Uh, they are light spear and swordsmen. Okay, so they're superior troops. They're going to be difficult to, to crack. Um, however, if we press him, we might be able to king, kill the king. Uh, then over here we have Gallic cavalry. And over here we have another unit of lowland warriors, and then more highland warriors, and then finally we have the javelin men. Uh, these are skirmishing units, and they will evade combat to the best of their ability, 
and they will use uh, ranged combat javelins to try and disrupt the enemy lines. Okay. Now, all right, Marcus Claudius Marcellus is our Roman general here. Uh, superior undrilled armored cavalry who are steady with light spear and sword. And then we have our regular. We have four of these cavalry units here. Average undrilled armored cavalry, steady light spear and sword. So. They're basically the same as our general here, except uh, they are average. He is superior. And then we have uh, Legionary Velite. Uh, average drilled. Oh, these guys are drilled. That is very good because that means that they will be able to quickly change. They'll be very highly mobile skirmishing units for us. So we'll be using these guys to try to disrupt the enemy. Uh, average drilled, protected light foot, steady light spears and javelins. 500 men each. Okay. So. With all that, let's go ahead and hop into the game here. So I'll show that. I'm going to be moving our Velite over here. The idea is to disrupt uh, the enemy, so we're going to try to move them over to the flank. Believe it or not, our cavalry are actually going to engage the enemy in the middle and try to break their cavalry, try to kill their leader ASAP. <clears throat> now, I'm going to move our troops real quick, and I'm going to move our cavalry actually over here to the flanks. That's actually what I'm going to do. We're going to move our cavalry to the flanks. Uh, this unit here. Put our leader there. And have the other cavalry come to the front. Now, what I wanted to say was, in order for the, Galax to, uh, the Gallic army to win, they need to have 12 victory points. 12 out of 12. We only need 9 out of uh, 9. I believe that's how it goes. Okay. So, also, uh, your commanders have a command radius. If your troops are outside of the command radius, they'll get this little white hand symbol over there. And then it is difficult to give the units orders. So you want to have everybody within your command radius, right? Alright. Actually, let me show you. Okay. Undrilled. <clears throat> if I wanted to, I could right click on the unit and I can have them set their facing. Now, setting your facing uses, because they're undrilled, uh, uses up all their movements, so I can go ahead and undo that, as long as I don't engage my units in combat, I can undo a move, okay? But, while you're moving your troops, you could also have them change facing to a limited degree, right? So it looks like, um, you could have them do a 45 degree change, right? Of facing. So that way or that way. Okay? Alright, we'll get into facing, uh, more in the future. You also automatically face when you engage a unit in combat. Uh, when you engage the combat, but uh, you do not change your facing when an enemy engages you from the rear. Okay? Alright, so let's go ahead and end the turn there. And now it's the Gallic's turn. So they're going to get first blood here, killing two of our men over here, and three of our men over there. You can see they're moving their Highland Warriors up along with their Lowland Warriors. Cavalry charged, skirmishers move back and evade. See our right flank is actually um, in danger, so we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and use our uh, skirmishers trying to disrupt this cavalry here. Uh, over here, we're going to bring our skirmishers up, have them do the same against their uh, general unit. All right. Now, now we're going to engage uh, enemy general with our general, and he evaded. Now, our cavalry just pursued, so that puts us incredibly, dangerously close to the Gallic Highland Warriors, who are going to charge our general, Marcus Claudius Marcellus, next round. So this is, this is dangerous. we got to be careful here. All right, so we're going to uh, reinforce the general here. with our units and then we're gonna have our cavalry let's see here hmm I'm gonna use this unit as a uh, <clears throat> as a deterrent for these guys to come and charge our flanks if they do then we'll hit we'll try and hit them from behind that's the idea alright and then here we can use. You can see that our cavalry unit can't move to this space here because they're so undrilled. They have a hard time maneuvering. 
So they're at full gallop. So that they're having a hard time maneuvering. We can go ahead and attack here, though. Um, should I do it, though? I don't know if I want to. They are superior undrilled, so against our cavalry, they will win. Alright, so we're going to move this cavalry unit actually to support here. Now the object is we want to break their left wing. This would be actually be their right wing. But we want to break uh, the enemy on our left side. If we can do that before the enemy can come around our flank, uh, then we have a good chance of winning this battle. We are outnumbered after all. Alright, so let's go ahead and end the turn. Let's see what the enemy has in store for us. So our cavalry evaded. Uh, they did press us into combat here, though, <clears throat> with our leader. Got to be careful about that. And that's it. The Roman turn has has begun here. Hmm. want to try and disrupt the enemy here. I would like for our cavalry to pull back, but that might not be possible here. So we're charging the Gallic Warriors. They are disrupted. Maybe we can go ahead and finish this flank off here. Nope. I'm very concerned about charging these lowland warriors here. Uh, that could really jack us up. We're going to have our skirmishers continue to put the pressure on the enemy. Uh, these cavalry need to come back into the game here. So try to move them up. And continue the combat against the lowland warriors there. We're able to disrupt them. That's good. we got to be careful that our leader doesn't get killed in that combat. It's dangerous when our, our leader's fighting there. There we go. That was pretty devastating combat for them, but still they are not broken. There's 1,500 Gallic Warriors there, so it's going to be very difficult to break them. And it seems that they charged uh, Velite with their cavalry. More combat up here. And our Velite have been fragmented. Cavalry go ahead and evade. Velites are getting charged from the rear. That's probably going to rout them and the entire unit was cut down. Oh boy, it's not looking good. Got a rear charge on our cavalry by their cavalry. That's going to send us into fragmented. And these are superior cavalry too, so we got to be careful with that. And now they're fully routed and running off the field. So very bad, very bad. Alright, so we're going to continue the combat up here, hopefully route these Gallic warriors here. Yes, fully routed now. That's good. And we're going to go ahead and charge. Let's see here. Where can we charge at? Oops. Undo that move. We're going to go ahead and charge uh, the enemy here. Um, right here. Ah, oh, we took quite a few casualties and became disrupted. Alright, we're going to go ahead and attack here as well. And they're disrupted, that's good. So overall, it's looking pretty bad for the Romans right now. Highly outnumbered. Continue to put the pressure on the enemy here. Hopefully try and disrupt them. Not having much success, unfortunately. We lost the unit of Velite, and we got uh, a Roman cavalry running away. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and continue the combat here. Hopefully we can break the little warriors once and for all. They are routed. Excellent. This is very good. But now we are in direct combat with King Britomartus. So it's important that these uh, units get swept up. Hopefully our, our general can maintain control. You can see the score is even, but actually they are, they are winning. So let's hope that we can break these units here.
If this entire wing just swept around, they would completely destroy us. Oh, we're taking a lot of casualties. You can see our cavalry were able to reform, but I think they're about to get charged. And they were able to evade, uh, and when they did evade, they evaded off the screen. That sucks. All right, so now a couple things we can try to do here. Uh, I'm going to swing our cavalry around the side here. Uh, our skirmishers are going to come up and try to dissuade the enemy from continuing their attack. We're bring our skirmishers over here on this flank and over here on this flank, and hopefully that'll that'll uh, stop them from. Uh, uh, it'll be very difficult for them to come around and attack our skirmishers like that. Uh, here, we're going to continue attacking the enemy, our supporting units. Hopefully, route them. Nope, no route. And then uh, combat, Roman against Gaul. Oh yes, that was good for us. So uh, that um, the skull there means that they've already taken uh, what is it, 25% casualties. Okay. So as that number continues, or as these skulls continue to appear, this gives them uh, detrimental effects in combat because they're outnumbered. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Alright, let's see what kind of damage they're going to do. I have a feeling that these Gallic Warriors are going to attack us from the side. Now they're disrupted. That's good. See, that move did work. But, uh, unfortunately, they're coming around the side here. And, uh, that unit of, uh, Highland Warriors routed. That's good. And the cavalry pursued and smacked right into this group of Highland Warriors. Alright, so let's see if we can get our unit here to support. Hopefully break them. Nope, they're fragmented. Let's see if we can break their leader. Routed, yes, excellent. Now, now our cavalry are free and mobile. This is very good. Okay. So let's keep putting the pressure on their units here. Since they're so disorganized, we can stay behind them, throwing pile them into their backs, their highly mobile units. And with that, let's go ahead and maneuver these cavalry back around. And I think that's it for the turn. Let's go ahead and end the turn. And they rallied. Uh, every time you end the turn, you have a rally phase. Uh, this goes back to the tabletop edition of the game. Uh, your units are able to rally on their own, but they're far more likely to rally if they're in within uh, the closer they are to your commander. Right? Your commander has that rallying ability. And also, uh, the commander, I believe, he um, adds bonuses to when units do take damage whether they'll lose that cohesion or not from steady to disrupted to fragment, etc. So having your leader close by is very beneficial in this game. Alright. Gallic Warriors moving around yet again. Alright, so they have turned back around. So we are going to be seeing uh, the enemy fight face to face again. Hopefully we can break this entire side of the army though and oh they charged there. But we were able to evade and the game is coming to a close which is good for us. We just gotta be careful not to lose any more units and we should be okay. Alright so let's have our cavalry sweep back around here
And I think one of our Velite units ran out. No, here's the other one. Okay, never mind. I was thinking that one of our Velite units uh, ran off the map. One of them did get uh, slaughtered, though. Alright. So, let us... Let's use our cavalry here. We'll sweep them over this way. Along with our general here. Have him sweep that way. And we'll do one final charge against the enemy and hopefully break them all at once. We want to continue pursuing them. You see we just routed that unit there completely. So now the enemy general has left the battlefield. That means all of their units are now uncommanded. You can see that hand symbol there. That means they're out of the radius of the command. This is very good for us. All right, and now. Get our units ready for a cavalry charge. Continue harassing the enemy. Let's go ahead and end the turn. If we break one more unit or completely uh, route a unit, we'll get two points. For every unit that's routed, you get two points. For every unit that's dropped to fragmented, you also get one point. All right, so let's break this unit right here. It's already disrupted. That's excellent. And routed. Bam. Slaughtered. And that will win us the game, my friends. Alright. Let's go ahead and do the rest of our moves just for fun, though. And end the turn. Game is over. You are victorious. Okay. So, here's the victory. Uh, we lost 1,427 men. The Gauls lost 4,783 men. You can see that we they got two points for routing one of our units and another point for um, sending one of our units into fragmented. Um, overall, uh, very we did very well. I played this scenario uh, once when I originally got the game and I did horribly. The Gauls decimated me. Uh, so it's nice to know that I've learned a few tricks. <laughs> Now the game, uh, the scenarios get much more difficult than this one. This is kind of like your tutorial scenario where it int introduces you to the game. You can see that as the Romans, we weren't even using any of our legionaries, uh, so our legionnaires. So we haven't even got to the point where we have full lines of battle. But I am going to be uploading more of these scenarios, and we will be playing from different perspectives, not just the Roman perspective as well. And so we'll see a lot more. Uh, of this game in the future okay so anyways uh, let me know how you guys uh, like this game go ahead and drop your comments down below keep in mind we're gonna have more content here so if you didn't like what you saw or you'd like to see more please let me know and uh, I'll try to make you guys happy in the future okay until then I'm right house take care and happy gaming